Okay, STEM class, I just kind of wanted to go over this a little bit because I am getting a lot of packets that are not very completed. I know you, I mentioned that earlier, so I wanted you guys to actually watch this video and kind of listen to me explain it. So you guys are going to be working on a new um, project. You guys know that this is your STEM notebook, so you're going to be able to brainstorm, research, create new ideas for changing the world. Okay, so you're going to read page two. So as you go through this video, you'll just pause it and do whatever I tell you to do real fast. Okay, so pause this and read page two. Uh, then on page three, what do you think needs to be included in designing a pollinator garden? So what you guys are going to be doing as you watched in the video is you are designing a hypothetical garden that is aimed to attract pollinators. Pollinators are going to be birds, bees, butterflies, even bats at night um, can be considered a pollinator. Uh, certain bats, so not all bats, but there are certain bats that are pollinators. Um, so you want a garden that is going to specifically attract those organisms. And there are certain plants that attract certain um, pollinators. Okay, so what do you think needs to be included in designing a pollinating garden? So go ahead and pause it. Answer the question. You answer it as well as your partner. Um so what different ideas did your partner have about what should be included in a pollinator garden? So write down and think about what are the different things that you and your partner said. And it is okay if they're different because you guys may ha you have different backgrounds and so you're going to have different ideas. And I want you to write those things down. There were some different things um, that you both kind of said. Uh, what ideas do you have about the arrangement of plants in a pollinator garden? Do you think that that matters? Do you think there should be a specific arrangement of the plants in your um, pollinator garden? Okay, so there's the video. You can, um, I sent that link so you can watch that on your own as well. On page five of your STEM notebook, complete the observations and questions after watching the video. Use page four as a reference. So go ahead, pause this, watch the video if you haven't already. If you watched it, watch it again and write down any observations that you had, things that you needed to know that you remember. Um, and then what also, any kind of questions. And as you watch the video, did any questions pop out at you? Then I want you to create a list of questions about types of pollinators, plants that attract the pollinators and the materials you might need to make your garden. I said, this is going to be a hypothetical type garden because um, we don't have the space or the place to actually create this garden for real. But just think about what materials you might actually need if you were to make a real garden. What plants are pollinators that attract pollinators? Um, and what are pollinators? Is every kind of bee and wasp and um, butterfly a pollinator? And if it's that's not the case, that's what you're going to research. You're going to research that material. Okay, so that's going to be the bottom of page five. You're going to find that. Now I want you to meet with your launch team. And I want you to begin to explore that material list that you have. So there's a list of materials that you can see in your packet there. And I want you to kind of explore them. What items do you think would be beneficial in creating your hypothetical garden? And again, the, this is what you should be doing on your own. I'm just taking a few minutes and kind of walking you through it because I'm getting packets that are not complete. I'm getting packets that I can't even read. So you are to do this and kind of walk through this, okay? This is pretty self-explanatory, but I'm not getting um, the level of, I, 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 you guys aren't reaching, I guess, my level of expectation. Some of you are, some of you are doing fantastic. I'm not saying everybody, um, but just know that some of you need to, to put a little bit more effort in, okay? Now I want you to brainstorm. I want you to come up with three to five questions or possible solutions for creating a pollinator garden. So what are some questions? Um, and the questions could be like, 
where would be the best place? Now, let's theoretically think about putting the garden at school. So where around the school would be a good place? Do pollinators, do all pollinators need bright sun? Do some of them need partial sun? Uh, do some of them need full shade? Um, is it better to be in um, a crowded area? Is it better to be near trees? Like, think about, is it better to be near like a heavily, um, an area where a lot of traffic is going to be? So like, think about those things. Like, what kind of questions should you be asking when you are planning and creating this pollinator garden. I want you to share your three to five questions or solutions ideas with another team. And I want you to jot down any new ideas that you discover and you record them in your book. So again, you should be pausing this video and doing these things. So it may take you a couple class periods to get through this video and that's fine because I want you to listen to me, tell you what to do, pause the video, Go do that. Once you're done, restart the video. Then you're gonna research with your graphic organizer and you're gonna consider the following areas. What are types of pollinators? Now listen, this is a hypothetical garden, but it's also a hypothetical to Ohio. So pollinators that live in South America are not the type of pollinators we want in our garden because they don't live here because that becomes either a, and possibly an invasive species Okay, we want to stick to our native species, species that are from here naturally. Again, same with the plants. What flowers are going to be okay to grow here? There are a lot of flowers and plants that cannot grow in Ohio because there is this range, and these are things you're gonna be researching, is there are ranges of um, hardiness. There's this hardiness zone map. And you're going to see that some flowers and pollen and uh, plants are not going to thrive here. There's a reason we don't have pal palm trees in Ohio. Okay, there's a reason for that. So again, researching the types of pollinators that are native to Ohio, research the types of plants that are native to Ohio and what their needs are. Again, do they need a certain amount of space? Do they need a certain amount of light, a certain amount of water? All of those things you have to think about because you want this hypothetical garden to be sustainable. Okay, and then how do you arrange it? There are some plants that shouldn't be near each other, okay? And some plants are going to do better next to each other. So think about those. Now stop, pause, and really research. I'm saying really, really research. Okay, so after doing research, add any new ideas to the team sharing page. So go back to your team sharing page. Did you come up with any new ideas like, hey, we really wanted to do those plants, um, but we can't because even though they're beautiful and uh, we've seen them at like, I don't know, the Franklin Park Conservatory, we can't grow them outside in our, in the, our yard. So we have to change those ideas and combine those ideas, combine the new ones that you have with the old ones that you have. So again, pause the video and add any new ideas that you have. Okay, so now it's gonna be the collaborative brainstorm. You're going to review your group's brainstorm and add any of the new ideas. You're going to discuss the sustainability and the scalability of your solution. And you're like, what in the world is that? Sustainability, <coughs> excuse me, is can these organisms thrive and live and be sustained? Now, there are two types of plants, annuals and perennials. One of them only lasts a season and then die off and never come back. Some plants you plant and they will come back every single year as long as their requirements are met. So you wanna think about that. Do I want plants that I'm, are gonna come back on their own once I plant them, they're gonna come back over and over and over again? Or do I wanna plant plants that I have to replant new, every, new ones every year because they don't live that long? Um, or doing a mixture of them. The scalability is like how big the scale, the scalability of your solution. How big is your solution? Okay. And so on. Combine any similar ideas, get rid of any ideas that are not going to work, and then really narrow down your ideas to have one beautiful concept. Okay. Again, scalability. You may have said, I want to do a football field size garden. Think about what that would maintain, what that would cost to maintain. So again, that's the scalability. What can I theoretically sustain? 
what size is going to be sustainable and make it worth it. Like what's going to make it worth the pollinators coming. So then you're going to pair up with a member of another group and share what your idea is and why you are doing it. Then you're going to switch roles. So partner A, share the idea, give one strength. Uh, partner B, give one strength, one potential weakness, and one question, and then switch. So yes, you're going to go up. So if you have two of you in your group, each of you can go to find somebody else from a different group. So then you're getting really multiple groups kind of working together. Okay. And then you can write both of those down in the packet. So again, pause it, go do that. The ante is sketch. This is an initial sketch of what your pollination garden will look like. Okay. Um, this does not have to be perfect. You can represent the plants with circles or squares or X's, whatever. It's just kind of showing me your dimensions. Is your garden square? Is it circular? Is it around the tree? Kind of where it is. Um, this one's kind of sketch out the dimensions you're thinking and then kind of your arrangement. On this side, I'm going to have, you know, some rose bushes. And then over here, I'm going to have, you know, some lilacs and in the middle i'm going to do some annuals and i'll just have to replant those every year you know think about your garden and then make sure you have a key on there or label you know put a circle and label the pollen the plant in there then you're going to share your sketch with your group don't make a decision yet you will have time later Right now, you just need to take the best ideas from each member. So every member in your group is going to draw their own sketch, okay? Again, you can draw these on a separate sheet of paper and then just staple them all together when you're done. But every single one of you in your group, which will only be two or three, do your own sketches and then compare them. Be like, oh, I really love the idea of that. And then your partner can be like, but I love the idea of yours. And then you combine them, okay? So use strengths and weaknesses chart in your STEM notebook on page 11. You're going to complete the discussion questions one and two at the bottom of the page. Okay, so go ahead and do that. Then you're going to share your absolute best idea with another group. Focus your discussions on the questions in your STEM notebook. Don't be asking some random other questions. Focus on the questions in your STEM notebook. So again, Pause this, find a group. Even if they're not quite done, you can still share your idea with them. They don't have to share their idea with you yet, um, but share your idea. And then they can look through the packet and ask you questions. Okay, now you're going to build it. So you're going to start creating the design of your garden. Include pollinators, plants, and functional arrangement of the garden. You're going to complete the table in your STEM notebook to show your success and then what needs the improvement. Okay, so again, pause this and start creating the design of your garden. Sorry. So then you want to share your model pollinator garden with others in your class. And you're like, well, what does that mean? Well, it can be a couple different things. You could actually create a little model. If you are a hands-on person and you are artsy and you've got stickers and whatever, you can actually create a model, okay? Or you can simply draw it out. And this sketch should look a lot better than your other sketch. There should be colors to this sketch. There should be dimensions to this sketch. There should be a key to this sketch. I mean, everything. This sketch should look like an actual, um, uh, I'm trying to draw a blank on a landscape scheme, like a landscape architect scheme. So you want to have, if you choose to do the sketch, or you can do make a model out of actual materials in the classroom. Then you're going to choose from one of the menu options and share your final work with a larger audience. That larger audience is really just me when I actually grade it. Okay, so this is when you're going to choose one of those options and actually do that. Then you're gonna complete the self-reflection questions in the STEM notebook. And I've had some people ask me questions on how we should do this. And it's you can do it a couple different ways. You can talk about it with your group, with your teammate, and write down what you guys came up with together. Or you can each write down your own self-reflection questions in the notebook. So you just put your name, colon, your reflection, 
And then, you know, down when that's done, you put your partner's name and they write their reflection. And it's really either one because you guys work together as a team, uh, but you may still have different thoughts on how it worked. So that's really up to you, either a group reflection or individual self reflections. OK, um, you're going to see this warm up on page one, page 15. Um, these really I'm not as critical on these ones just because it's kind of in a weird place. They're at the end of your notebook, but yet you're supposed to do them kind of in the middle. Um, but you can definitely answer them at the end. Is what is the purpose of pollinators and what are some examples of pollinators? Those are really easy questions that you can answer really quickly. And then why does the arrangement of the garden matter? Why did it matter that you actually had to put time and effort into how you're going to arrange your hypothetical garden? Why did it matter? And then what is at least one design problem or issue you still haven't solved with your design? So what is one thing? And if this question, I can't remember if this question is in the packet or not. Um, if it's not, just write it down somewhere uh, on a separate sheet of paper and attach it. But what is at least one design problem or issue you still haven't been able to solve with your design? And then what additional information do you need in order to make the perfect pollinator garden? What is going to make your pollinator garden perfect? If you've ever been to some garden places, you'll see that sometimes they'll say pollinator garden, do not touch. Uh, you'll see on the side of the road where it says like, do not mow. Uh, there's reasons for that. Okay, so what are some different information that you would need to actually make a really perfect pollinator garden? Okay, so I hope this helped you just kind of walking you through this different stuff. Because like I said, the packets that I'm getting are kind of just absolute bare minimum work. And that's not what I'm expecting in a STEM elective. You really should be doing much better um, with your packet. So I really hope that that helped. I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. Um, and I said, this is probably going to take you a couple days to get through that because you need to pause almost on every single slide and do whatever it's 